That was simply lovely. <laughs> wow. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. Welcome to those present, those reading the service, and those joining online later. May this church be a space where each one of us feels safe and respected, a part of God's beloved kingdom. God created and cherishes our diversity in age, gender, sexual orientation, body build, health, and history. As we pray, work, sing, lament, and celebrate, we do so as equal members. May this time be a sacred hour of community with God and with one another. Our local announcements. We pray for St. Andrew's United Church in Coniston and the Central United Church in Sault Ste. Marie. There are refreshments downstairs after service. Thank you to she who provided it. Betty. 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 Thank you, Betty. It's not my usual story. <laughs> we'll take anything. Water and bread. I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> On Tuesday, May 21st, there is a Zoom Bible study from 10 to 11.30. Also on Tuesday, May 21st, there is Stitch Corner from 1 to 2. On Sunday, May 26th, at 2 o'clock, is the Affirming Ministry Service. Also on Sunday, the 26th, at 6 o'clock, there is a French service at St. Peter's. On Tuesday, May 28th, there is a hybrid council meeting at 7 o'clock. They would like you to submit your reports as soon as possible. On Tuesday, May 28th, from 10 to 11.30, there is a Tunes, Tales, and Tots for ages 0 to 6, plus their caregiver. And we're looking for someone, looking for two someones mm -hmm. to host uh, snacks for that 28th. Please see Pam or On June 1st, Morning Brews and Future Views from 9.30 to 12.30. It's a workshop at St. Andrews with other United Churches. On June 2nd, there is Communion. It's also Pride Sunday. And also something very exciting, there's a pet blessing at 1 o'clock on June 2nd. In May, we ask that you prayerfully reflect on the contributions of Asian Canadians to Canadian society. And we'd like to remind you that the Gaza ceasefire pilgrimage is over, but please keep on praying and advocating. You guys walked three or five and three quarter trips. That's very impressive. I saw some of the kilometers back there and way to go. Wow. So thank you very much for that. We would invite women and those identifying as women, aged 18 and over, to come to the banquet, a camping retreat, August 23rd, 24th, and 25th. It's to nourish body, mind, and spirit, surrounded by natural beauty and kindred souls. There is a limit of 30 people, and it will be an inclusive, accessible facility. <laughs> Registration details will follow. on land where Indigenous people have lived for thousands of years. This church is located on the traditional territory of the Wadikatebe and Anishinaabek. We lament the damage that European colonization has had on First Nations, Inuit, and Métis communities. And we acknowledge that many Indigenous people still today live with intergenerational trauma, racism, and inequity. All who live in this area are parties to the Robinson-Huron Treaty, which outlines the shared rights and responsibilities connected to the care and use of the land. As a covenant people, we are called to honor promises. As a church, we have been called to a journey of learning, reconciliation, and reparation. As Christ's people, we are called to love our neighbors. 
May God support and bless our commitment to live out these calls. Jesus is the light of the world. Remembering his promise that when two or three are gathered in his name, he will be there. We light this candle to welcome the presence of the risen Christ here with us today. We light this candle, remembering a time when the Spirit came down like flames of fire, praying that we too may be warmed, inspired, and ignited by the dancing flames of the Spirit worrying in us in this time of worship and all the days of our lives. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I am here. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I am here in your thoughts. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I am here in your words. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I am here in your deeds. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I am here speaking to the people. Please join me in the opening prayer. Mighty Spirit, we invite you to join us this day as you did for the disciples so many years ago. Remind us of your constant presence in our lives and gentle guidance in all we do. As we reach out to you, not just today, but every day, steer us in the direction of Jesus and aid us in fulfilling God's word. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Heavenly Council, we are imperfect beings who sometimes forget that the wonders around us come only from you. We drown out the sights and sounds of your presence with earthly delights. We forget to listen as the Holy Spirit whispers guidance. We do not notice Jesus walking beside us on our own comfort. We ignore your presence leading us onward through our struggles. Hear our cry of all the forgiveness and now. Just as Jesus did not leave his disciples alone, we too are blessed with the ever-present Holy Spirit. By trusting and listening to the truth, we will be guided to Jesus with his promise of everlasting life and the forgiveness of our sins. Thanks be to God. Our first hymn is Voices United, 382, Breathe on me, breath of God.
peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. because we get to talk about the Holy Spirit. Strangely, I find, myself, that we don't talk about the Holy Spirit enough. We talk about the Word of God, we've got the Bible, we follow Jesus throughout his life, and we're always talking about the stories that come from those experiences. But sometimes I find that I forget that the Holy Spirit connects it all. I was thinking last night, and what's the Holy Spirit like? I'm like, it's like a telephone cord. I'm like, no, because a telephone only connects two people. I'm like, okay, um, well, it's like Bluetooth. I'm like, no, it's not like, that like it connects two things as well, and sometimes it doesn't work that well. And it's a little staticky. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's like Wi-Fi. <coughs> I think it's like Wi-Fi. I, I don't think I've narrowed it down quite yet, but the Holy Spirit, it's, it, it's our connection to God. It is our telephone line to God. It's there interpreting that Jesus is beside us. And it's there connecting each one of us to each other. It's what came down on the apostles and allowed them to understand and connect with people around the whole world speaking different languages. And while we can't speak different languages, we can connect with people in different ways. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. First, it's going to be, we're talking about how to connect with people. And one of the first ways, the easiest ways that we can do that around the world is by our facial expressions. So we're going to look at a couple of pictures today. And you guys are going to tell me what you think the people in the pictures are feeling. So first we have a man. What's this man feeling? Pain. Pain. What else could he be feeling? Sadness. 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 Worry. Confusion. Worry. Pardon me? Confusion. Confusion? So there's a lot of things going on here. So, but we know that he is in some form of distress. Yeah. <coughs> and that is, I believe, the Holy Spirit speaking to us and letting us know that this man maybe needs a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. All right, here we've got a young woman. What is the uh, emotion that you sense coming from her? Happiness. 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 What else could it be? Sort of a sense of peace. A sense of peace? Not serenity, but just things are going well. Things are going well. What else? Confidence. Confidence. Yeah, she looks very confident, doesn't she? She looks pleased to see whoever is in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> she looks pleased to see the people in front of her. All right. And so what, what do you think the Holy Spirit is telling us about this person? She looks like she's got it together. <laughs> is there anything that we can do for her or perhaps with her? Smile back. Smile back, all right. Join her in what she's doing, yeah. <laughs> Join her in whatever she's doing because it's making her happy. It might make us happy too. What else? How else would you, re if you saw someone looking at you like that, how would you respond to them? You feel better. You feel better. Okay, great. So maybe she's spreading a little bit of Holy Spirit to us. I would speak to her. You would speak to her? Yeah. She looks a little wealthy, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Have a hug. Well, you give her a hug. Right? <laughs> Good job. All right, next picture. What about this young boy? Curiosity. Yeah. Curiosity. Yeah. Wondering. He's wondering. Okay. So who is that person? <laughs> Maybe he looks worried. He's looking yeah. at us saying, yeah. all these people looking yeah. at him. Okay. Any other senses of emotions you get from this young boy? A little shy. A little shy. Yeah, he seems to be hiding behind something. Yeah. Okay, and so what's the Holy Spirit telling us to do with this young child? Maybe ask him what he, uh, maybe he's looking for someone, maybe he's done, like his parents. 
Okay, so we can ask the child if he needs some help because he may be looking for someone such as his parents. What else could we do? Get down on his level if you talk to him. Get down on his level if yeah. you're talking to him. Great idea. Yeah. Ask him what he's thinking about. Yeah. Ask him what he's thinking about. I think I give him a hug. You give him a <laughs> hug. Lots of hugs going around today. All right. Okay, last picture. Okay, and this girl. Yeah. <laughs> Celebration. She's Celebration. She's excited. Yeah. She's getting ready to dance. <laughs> She's getting ready to dance. All right. What else do we feel from this picture? Happiness. Happiness. Anything else? I did that when I won a race. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? I did that once when I won a race, like I was ecstatic. Oh, you yeah. oh, and when you did that when you won a race. Yeah. Yeah, she could be crossing a finish line, couldn't she? Yeah. All right. And so what does the Holy Spirit inspire you to do here? Join her. Join her, yeah. Join her. I want to give her a high five. Yeah. 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 What Hallelujah. Else? Yeah. Congratulations. What was that, sorry? I said congratulate her. Congratulate her, yes. If she was. Anything else? All right. So, in my mind, and hopefully yours as well, we saw four pictures there with four different expressions, and we came up with ways that we could interact with those people. And I believe it's the Holy Spirit prompting us to do that both through our humanity, our empathy, and our belief in being good and celebrating with people. Jesus celebrated with a lot of people. He celebrated their happy moments and he helped them through their sad moments. And I believe that the Holy Spirit, whenever we encounter someone, is guiding us in a small way to interact with them. And that's what the Holy Spirit is all about. It's connecting us with one another and facial expressions being able to identify what someone else is feeling or empathizing with that is so very important. So we'll have a little prayer um, to Jesus first. So please repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear, Dear Jesus, Jesus, help us recognize in others, help help us recognize in others, others the emotions that they're feeling. The emotions that they're feeling. And we pray to the Holy Spirit and we pray to the Holy Spirit to help us acknowledge those feelings. To help us acknowledge those feelings. And interact with the people. And interact with the people. We see in our lives. We see in our lives. Amen. Amen. We'll now have the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and then forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is from More Voices, 179. Sisters, let us walk together.
It's now time for thanksgiving, gratitude, and mission. So a shout out to any local thanks. We truck show uh, and this weekend in Cambria brought a lot of people to our town and it was wonderful. A big truck show. It was a big truck show. Wow, yeah. great. Yeah, it was awesome. yeah. Is that why the road was closed over here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and I'm really grateful that A, Faye got those signs up, uh, our affirming signs mm -hmm. on, on our church signs. Because when I arrived, she was like standing on the top <laughs> of a ladder. Yeah. All by herself. Yeah. Oh. And she didn't fall up. <laughs> <laughs> and she got the sign on, and they look really great. Thank God. <laughs> so that was a shout out to Faye for putting up the affirming mm -hmm. signs um, on a ladder, very safely, no doubt. Uh -huh. um, I think we should be thankful that Danny Chatsis is retiring and that he and Karen are going to take some time this summer to yes. just uh, refresh themselves ah, and uh, she said rejuvenate. So yes. it's, uh, it's good when you are able to say goodbye to a working life and look into a new chapter. You've got a retiring couple, you said? Danny is retiring from his job. Yes. Oh, Danny is retiring yeah. from his job and will be spending the summer relaxing yeah. after, I'm sure, many, many years of hard work. And I'm very thankful for the sun because Arlene got to go to camp. Yes. And she is just so happy. <laughs> very I'm thankful sure. for the sun. Yes. Ar you said Arlene gets Arlene to go. Arlene got to go to camp. Oh, she can't camp. go with the sun. <laughs> I'm very happy that we're celebrating my husband's 87th year. Yes. So, three, yes. Three, yes. yes. Very excited to celebrate. What is your husband's name? Peter. Peter. Peter's 87th year. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Anything else? Well, I'm going to toss out something. Uh, my husband and I celebrated 20 years of marriage. Yes. Yes. So yes. Yes. Yay, us. Yes. Yes. I, some of you in here um, uh, may have been married longer, but I'm, I'm very impressed with my 20 years. Thank you. <laughs> Should be. All right, a story about your generosity. Connecting for global peace and security. Project Plowshares is a Canadian peace research institute with a focus on disarmament efforts and international security. It is also one of our dedicated mission and service partners. Project Plowshares important efforts come with many barriers, including discouragement, pushback, and regular exposure to mentally draining work. Duncan Edges started his journey with Project Plowshares as a supporter. When he saw an opportunity to be the United Church of Canada representative on the management committee, he felt that it was his time to step into the key role. His comments on how wise and inspirational <coughs> the team is, sharing that they keep hope in impossible situations. Project, sorry, Project Plowshares includes people from diverse backgrounds who are all deeply committed to making the world a better place. Rooted in the ethics of Christianity, peace, reconciliation, and justice, their work connects with people inside and outside faith communities. Members are respected and invited to be part of the important conversations. Your support through mission and service provides encouragement and hope to the leaders of Project Plowshare, a vital connection point for those passionate about global peace and security. Thank you. As a blessed people, let us present our offerings of talents, time, and tithes with glad and generous hearts. Prayer of dedication, please join me. Holy oh, One, please accept these small gifts that we bring before you today and those that we practice in word and deed throughout the week. Continue to move with us through our faith so that we may honor your expectations of us in all ways and with all the peoples of the earth. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn is from More Voices, 150, Spirit God, Be Our Breath. Let me explain. 
explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For this reading from Scripture, thanks be to God, and by God's grace, we hear a living word in it. Isn't today wonderful? Pentecost is one of my favorite Sundays. It is one of the few times in the year that we really focus on the Holy Spirit. At this time, God is in heaven. Jesus ascended the week prior to be at God's side, and the apostles are waiting. Finally, the Holy Spirit appears and each apostle is filled with its being. But that's not all. <coughs> Romans chapter 8 assures us that you, however, are not controlled by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. The Spirit of God lives in you. It's amazing when you really think about it. A little piece of God lives within each one of us. While we may not be able to speak in the various languages of the earth as the apostles could, the Holy Spirit can influence our thoughts, words, and deeds if we allow it. The Holy Spirit also enhances our connection with other people. This was the whole point of the apostles being blessed, so that they could communicate and connect with people from all over the known world. And I believe that this act of connection <coughs> is what drives many of us today. We are motivated to help others and to self-sacrifice when we sense that there is need. On the flip side, we also feel happy and excited when someone else experiences pleasure. The Holy Spirit even cuts through language and cultural barriers, and often, as I showed you earlier, a simple picture is enough for the Holy Spirit to elicit a response in us. I have two stories to share with you about the powerful workings of the Holy Spirit. In the first one, I am 22 years old, and I have traveled to Tunisia, an Arabic country in North Africa. The people speak French and Arabic and I relied on my scant grade nine knowledge of French to communicate. One day, as I was walking alone from a museum to join my friends, I realized that I was being followed. I made my escape and ran to a market vendor that we had been told was a safe place if we ever needed help. I ran into his shop and burst into tears. This is the story that I told him in my broken French. I walk, but man walk with me. This is not good. I run. Man runs. I run into street and buy taxi. Man runs with taxi. Taxi arrives here. The story was much longer as I tried to explain everything with the few words that I knew, and I was gesturing a lot with my hands to get my point across. <laughs> the man listened to my whole story without interrupting, and at some point, T appeared. <laughs> when I finally stopped, he asked me what the man looked like, but aside from saying that he had dark hair and a beard, 
the only identifying feature was a purple shirt. The man sent his two sons out into the vast market to look for the man to ensure that I had not been followed. Then he settled me into the back of his shop so that I could wait until my friends arrived two hours later. When they did, he had his sons escort me to the meeting place. I have been forever thankful to that man. I was frightened and alone in a foreign country, and he took me in without question. I'm not even sure he understood the words that I was saying, <laughs> but he felt that I needed help, and he provided it. Some people might dismiss it as simple human kindness, but I believe our kindness is sparked and fed by something far greater than ourselves. How else can you explain people who go above and beyond, time and time again, past the point of exhaustion, yet never fail. Something must be feeding them, allowing them to persevere. I believe that to be the Holy Spirit. In my second story, I'm 43 years old and walking down Cedar Street in Sudbury <coughs> on a winter day on my way to a meeting. As usual, I passed several people asking can you spare some change? Shamefully, I didn't stop. As I approached one elderly man who seemed like he was about to ask the same, I automatically lowered my head and looked away. However, the words, Miss, can you help me, reached my ears. My feet took root. The word help made me stop so suddenly that I waved my hands to balance myself. Something about the way he asked and the words he used sparked a response in me that I could not ignore. I turned back to him and asked how I could help. He launched into a garbled story that between the noise on the street, his low tone, and his own confusion, I couldn't follow. When he finished speaking, I asked again how I could help. Bread, he said, bread and joint cream joint cream? Like A535? Voltaren works better, he said. <laughs> we were standing right outside of Repsol, and I invited him to join me while I picked out his items. But the store no longer welcomed him. So I shrugged my shoulders, and I told him I would be right back. I bought the items and delivered them to him outside. He thanked me, and I wished him well. I think about that story often, how it was the word help that made me stop. I have no doubt it was the Holy <coughs> Spirit working in me, listening more acutely to the mumbled words of those that I walked past, always in tune with God's will. Like the Arabic man in the market, I had very little information to go on, but I knew deep inside that this soul needed my help. I acted on faith alone. And what is faith, if not the gentle nudging of the Holy Spirit, reminding us of our place in God's plan? So how does the Holy Spirit work in you? We pray to God who is in heaven. We walk alongside Jesus as a friend. How often do we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit and listen to what it is telling us? probably more often than we realize. As Elizabeth's unborn baby leapt in her womb upon Mary's presence, do we not feel a sense of awe and wonder when we hear of a newborn babe? Or become elated about a good friend's news? Or pardon me, a friend's good news? or share in the despair of bad news affecting people that we don't even know? And how often does the Holy Spirit prompt us into action? Who has come to the aid of a neighbor by providing a car boost, the use of a telephone, or even just a cup of sugar? Who donates to the food bank or supports a family with gently used items? Who 
volunteers their time in countless ways so that others can prosper. This is the work of the Holy Spirit directing us to fill needs as we are able. In recent years, some of the greatest community evidence of the Holy Spirit my generation has ever seen was in working together to get through the pandemic. The effects of which are still felt today. The healthcare system was pushed to extremes. Workplaces deemed essential, but filled with young, <coughs> underpaid staff rose to the challenge of providing food and other necessities to our homes and bodies. People took in family members left unemployed by massive shutdowns. Others delivered food and offered comfort through phone calls to those who were alone. We have all self-isolated, worn masks, disinfected surfaces, delayed visiting family, and rushed to get vaccinated. Some of us are still tired from those few years. But our sense of connection with others and the corresponding need to help was fired by the Holy Spirit, and it never tires. So consider how the Holy Spirit is working through you as each new day approaches. Listen to the whispers in your heart and act on them if you're able. And remember that a little piece of God resides in each one of us. Amen. We pray for all the people who feel powerless in this world. Continue to guide them to the Holy Spirit so that together you can ease their heavy burdens and eliminate their oppressive conditions. We await Jesus' return and we pray for earthly woes to fall aside. May the Holy Spirit lift us in mind, soul, and deed as we work toward the promise of heaven on earth. For everyone who is in our hearts and minds today, we offer a moment of silence.
As we leave today, remember that the Holy Spirit is with you always. You need only stop and listen to the whisperings of truth and wisdom to find your way. Rejoice in God's love for us and share that love with others. Amen. Amen.